What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm talking about the Xbox Developer Direct. And I want to give my straight up opinions about it. Is this going to be the year of Xbox or is it just smoke and mirrors? Let's jump into it. First off, I want to talk about the good. Overall, I feel like when you're looking at what Xbox is doing, specifically what their goal was with this Developer Direct is essentially for them to give an outline of at least the first half year of 2023 to discuss what games that they're going to be releasing. And essentially they did land on that goal that they were trying to do. When you're looking at the Xbox exclusives and the games that will be landing on Game Pass, you have Minecraft Legends dropping in April 18th. Forza Motorsport doesn't have a specific date yet, but it's slated to be dropping this year. Hi-Fi Rush literally dropping the day of the event. You have Elder Scrolls Online, the next chapter is dropping June 20th, and obviously Redfall dropping in May 2nd. And I think the key thing is, is that if you look at the dates from April all the way to June, you're getting a game every single month. And it looks like they're trying to give each developer their kind of chance to shine on the game that they've been working on it, it, for that for this time span. And the key thing that I reason why I, I say this is such a, a good thing for this event is because up to this point, it feels as if Microsoft has had a very difficult time setting a plan into place and actually landing on these dates versus how if you compare this to other game developers or just game companies in general, like for example, Sony, usually Sony has a plan in place of certain games dropping in certain times. And they've been pretty consistent on that. And so Microsoft in comparison, usually likes to just drop their big games in the fall, in the holiday season, and just let's put everything in that time span because we'll make the most money out of it and everyone's hyped for the fall season. But if you can at least put in games throughout the year, then it gets people playing on your ecosystem more often. And I think that's why this is a good thing for Microsoft, because at least they actually had a good set of games based on what we see right now of a schedule laid out for at least the first half of the year. And I obviously we're going to be you know seeing some more things down the line. Secondly, I feel like games in general look pretty solid. Minecraft Legends looks like a pretty fun game to play with people where you're not only playing with people, but you're also playing against enemies having a kind of a best of all worlds type of mentality where you're having the people who like to build, you can create your own defenses, people who like to explore, you get to go and find resources, and people who just like the combat, guess what? That's the whole point of the game. And essentially Minecraft Legends basically builds their entire experience around that concept. And I thought that was a pretty good, smart move on their part. Forza Motorsport looks straight up amazing with its fidelity and the basically the graphics of this game and it's very similar to what we saw with Forza Horizon. Essentially, everything was almost like a just the amount of work going into each kind of turn and every aspect of these cars just looks phenomenal. Elder Scrolls Online obviously giving you not only chapters from the previous games, but adding a brand new chapter for you to experience is also a pretty good thing to see because of the fact there's a lot of controversy that came along with having to pay a certain X amount of money a month just to get access to this title, and it's all coming to Game Pass. Redfall looks solid as well. It kind of gives off to me a lot more of a Borderlands and a kind of Far Cry kind of look to it, kind of having the idea that you can play by yourself or with a team of people. And I think this is a kind of the key thing we needed to see about Redfall, that there is going to be different types of missions that you can partake and that the world is full of things for you to do. Because one of the biggest problems that a lot of these types of games have is that if you don't really have events going throughout your your game, then it's just going to feel bland, boring, and no one's going to want to play that for a 60 plus hour experience. Having a large skill tree and even having some customizations to go with your character kind of opens up what you can do with this game. And I think that's kind of the best part about it so far. And it so far looks pretty solid. The biggest surprise to me was Hi-Fi Rush. I mean, for me personally, looking at the kind of the art style of the game and having kind of one of those games that just drops in that's just a fun, random, wacky game title to play, I think that's something that Microsoft is trying to kind of emphasize in this in this showing. And I actually kind of like the idea of it. Now, granted, I want to play it first to kind of get the full scope, but I think it was interesting to say the least. And it kind of reminds me of games like Sunset Overdrive that it was kind of just hidden in the dark and then once it finally dropped people liked it so hopefully hi-fi rush for microsoft's sake does land with people and it kind of looks like a very interesting game to play and for anyone that's a fan of jet said radio i think uh you should be kind of happy to see this type of game drop because it kind of gives off the same vibes as that xbox needed a win with this the, the small scale showcase because they wanted to try to give people their investors their fans the gamers some things that they can look forward to instead of not having anything to even have a mindset on 
going for at least the first half of this year. And lastly, the key thing I think is the most important for the showcase is that all of these games are arriving on Game Pass. I think the good thing about that is if you are a gamer for Xbox at this point and you have Game Pass, a subscription you pay for, then essentially you are all set. You have all these games coming to you and three of the five of them are sole exclusives to Microsoft, which does give them some more of those games that they can now say, this is part of our shelf. This is part of the games that we can show off to our investors, to our gamers, to say, hey, you're part of the Xbox ecosystem. I think the fact is, there's a lot of arguments of people saying that Microsoft has no games, quote unquote. The idea is that if you can get more exclusive out there, then that kind of argument just falls apart. Now with the good, we have to talk about the bad. Overall, when you look at this, this quick Xbox developer update, one of the biggest issues I have is the fact that we didn't see any of the big boys show up. Yeah, you know, Redfall is considered to be a big title for Microsoft and they're really hoping that it lands well but where was Avow? Starfield? Where was Hellblade? Where was Indiana Jones? Fable? I mean, damn, we're, we have a bunch of these games that are in the kind of the, the back rooms of Microsoft right now, and no one knows what the hell's going on. Now, granted, you're going to say, well, Mars, you know, Starfield's having their own showcase. I get it. I know that they are. But the point is that this is a perfect opportunity to show at least something about any of these games. Like, you don't have to have a 15 minute breakdown of games like Fable or, or Perfect Dark or any of these others that are there but can you at least give us a hey we didn't forget about perfect dark we're gonna hear about them at this event around this time period so make sure you stay tuned but right now they're hard at work anything like that about we haven't even heard from in like two years and now we're like it's supposed to drop in 2023 is it is it still live is it still a game did it change completely we don't know and that's kind of the scary part right it, it i think you need to kind of land on some of those things and you need to at least show that these games are in development they're doing all right on progress to the drop of the year or the time span that you're thinking of something that's kind of the problem i saw with this it's like a missed opportunity the other major issue i had and maybe i'm just a stickler for this but forza motorsport didn't give us a specific date on when it's going to release you had four of the five games giving you exact dates of when things are dropping and when to expect this content and all of a sudden forza motorsport says coming in 2023 well guys if you don't know it's january which means we have a long span of time to kind of think about when Forza Motorsport is going to drop. And now granted, Forza Motorsport could be kind of dropping based on the, you know, the, the Forza event they're having, but come on, man. If it's if it's a day away or multiple weeks or whatever, when you're gonna discuss the date, you gotta give us a window of time, right? Give us a is it the summer of 2023, the fall of 2023? You gotta give us a little bit more to, to give us a base of where this game's gonna land along this time span. The ugly of this event is I think the timing. Right? The timing of this developer direct update is kind of a bad spot in my in my opinion. First off, the fact that you had a lot of these pre-recorded sequences makes me wonder, could they have been shown during the Game Awards? I mean, at the end of the day, remember, Microsoft literally gave us blue balls during that event where they showed nothing. They showed little to anything of games dropping in 2023 and everyone was ragging on them. Everyone was pointing them out saying, hey, Phil Spencer sitting in the front row, but he's not going to show us a single game from his major, you know, his side, and and they're not wrong, right? And so when you look at this event dropping only two months later, or even a month later from the Game Awards, and now we're sitting here like, you're telling me that these pre-recorded sequences, this this footage that you have could not have been at least sprinkled in at the Game Awards, and then you could have had a deeper dive in some of them? I mean, it's just the timing here. Now, overall, I think when you look at this event, the key thing is what was Xbox's main goal? And the goal was to give you an outline of the key games coming out in the first half of 2023. And I think they accomplished what they were looking to do. It's kind of a tale of two takes if you think about it. You have one side, which is going to be the kind of the Xbox fanboy side that says, this is the greatest event I've ever seen, right? They have all these great games are gonna be masterpieces when they drop. And then you have the other side, which is most likely the other opposite fanboyism. And they'll say, oh, this is garbage. Where's all these other games that it's horrible because they didn't tell us exact dates of Starfield all that crap. The point is, though, it's in the middle. I think there's some good things to be taken from this event, saying that, yes, we have a schedule put into place of when games will drop, and then you have the other side of it. It's like, yes, even though this is a good thing for Microsoft, we want to see more of what they have. Where are the big boys at? Where can they kind of fit along this schedule? I think the key thing here is that at least that, you know, as gamers, we're getting at least a look at what one side's giving as well as what the other side is doing. So it kind of gives us a full circle of how the year, at least the first half year 
looks like for Microsoft. I think that's kind of the key thing that we're looking at. Now, is this the year of Xbox? I mean, it's hard, too early to tell, but one thing I will say is that all this money that was invested into these developers, it needs to finally pay off. All this money you invested has to have profit. And if these games that you're slating out for the first half of the year, and obviously even later on in the year, if they don't land well, as in they aren't good games or they have mishaps along the way, then you're just going to embarrass yourself again. But if they do land well, then there is a chance that it could be a year of Xbox. But it's too early to tell, and we'll have to find out sooner or later. Thank you, everyone, for watching. What do you think about this developer update? Do you think they've performed well? Do you think it really didn't do much at all? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you can find out when I drop some more dope content. I also live stream daily on Twitch, so please drop by. I stream daily with all different types of genres, and I love to see you there. Check us out on all of our social media platforms, and all those are located in the description below. Till next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>